and their sins. We, live, we see that God lists five specific things that Babylon will face in the future. But I want us to just pause for a moment and look at the scripture. The righteous will live by faith. I want to talk about the statement that the Lord makes to Habakkuk in the midst of telling of his judgment that is to come against Babylon. He says, the righteous will live by faith. Now this verse is quoted several times in the New Testament, encouraging God's people to live by faith. This is a great book to talk about what faith really is. Because as we read this book, Habakkuk is in the midst of a great struggle with his faith. I don't know where you are right now. You too might be in the midst of a great struggle with your faith. So today I want to ask and try to answer some questions regarding faith so that we will better understand and if this truly is something that is rational to live by in the midst of a world that doesn't really make sense. Can we really live by faith? Is this really possible? God's word says, the just shall live by faith. What does that mean to you? What does that mean to me? Amidst all our problems, the just shall live by faith. So let's start by asking, what is faith? Is faith trust in only what we can understand? Is that what we call faith? What really is faith? The author of the book of Hebrews says this about faith in, Rome, in uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. And certain of what we do not see. Do you understand that? Do you grasp that? Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Are you certain about something that you do not see? Is it possible to be certain about something you do not see? How can we be sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see? Can that be called just blind faith or wishful thinking? Well, that depends. It depends on what faith is in you. Are you putting your faith in something that is not worthy of your faith? How do you determine if something is worthy of your faith? Can you put your faith in this God? Is He worthy? Do you feel He is worthy for you to put your faith in Him? You've got to know Him. You can't put your faith in Him if you don't know Him. If you have not had an experience with Him, you can't put your faith in Him. That's the reason why the bulk of the Christian population does not have any faith at all. They do not have a relationship with Him. You've got to have a relationship with Him to have faith in Him. To know me, to have faith in me, to know my word, you've got to know me. You've got to know if I'll turn up or not. Just by my character, about punctuality, about faithfulness. If you don't know that, then you'll say, we don't know. We'll just look at the time and wait. Maybe you'll come and maybe you won't come. You've got to know the person. 
You got to know the person Jesus Christ. If you have any faith at all in Him, without faith it's impossible to please God. And a lot of people can't please God because they got no faith at all. They don't know God. They have absolutely no idea. Having faith is really only having faith in ourselves. And I, and I would really argue with you that having faith in ourselves is only wishful thinking. Because I don't know about tomorrow. I don't even know about tonight. So I've got no faith in myself. Anything can happen. But I can't have faith in the Lord. Amen. I cannot have faith in myself. You cannot even trust me tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised to anybody. We have today. Today you are promised. You're not promised tomorrow. And so we can't really say, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> because the Lord might want to see me before I see you. And there'll be no time for goodbyes. Because you can't say, hold on, I need to say everybody goodbye. And he says, I want you now. It means I want you now. So you cannot have faith in yourself. Is it easy to live by faith? When we really can't understand and see how things are working. Is it really easy? Can, is it possible to just live by faith? A lot of people say they live by faith. <laughs> They don't live by faith, they live by their wits. They go around telling everybody about their problems. They go around telling everybody that they live by faith and they haven't got anything. And so they say they live by faith. Living by faith means zipping your lips. And not knowing where it's coming from, but it's where you come. And sometimes it doesn't come on time. Your time. And they are coming ready to cut the lights. And you wonder, oh Lord, what are we going to do? Where's the money? How are we going to pay this? But then, suddenly, you get a sound on your cell phone and you see that the money is there. And God provides. At the right moment. Most times I say to him, Lord, you know, I appreciate you so much. But you know, it'll be a much better thing if you can just do these things a little earlier. <laughs> Save me a lot of stress. I don't like all this extra stress. I'm having enough tablets already. And you don't I don't want to have any more tablets. But living by faith means trusting the Lord in every knowing that he will turn up in his time. Faith in someone, faith worthy. You can only have faith in someone who is faith worthy. Are you faith worthy? This is why it is imperative that we know that what is uh, faith and know our faith worthiness. When you know that your faith is something or someone who is worthy of your faith, then you do not need to know all the details. It just settles it. I know he's faith worthy and because I have a good report of that, I don't need to have any more details. The matter is closed. His faithfulness is impeccable. He's never failed me in the past 
and because of history, past history, he has never failed me then, he can't fail me now. And so I ride on history. I ride on past experience. I ride on the fact that he didn't fail, he can't fail. There's no failure in God. Did you know that? There is no failure in God. You can search the records through and you will see it is true that there is no failure in God. How do we determine if someone is worthy of our faith? How do you determine if God is worthy of our faith? How do you determine if I am worthy of your faith? by the character. When I know a person's character, I can know if I can trust them without knowing the details of the particular circumstances. So let's ask the question, is God faith worthy? And you can just answer. Is God faith worthy? One, one yes, the rest of you don't think he's worthy, I take that answer. Oh, he takes that answer. Is God's character such that I should have faith in him? Yes. Oh yes, you can't point a finger at him. Even when the life we see is not making sense, to you, even when the problems that surround you seem like insurmountable, you can't understand it. Is God's character such that you can have faith in Him? Yes. yes. I believe the answer is yes as well. It is yes because God has shown Himself to be faithful. In other words, he is full of faith. Amen. He is faithful. God has shown himself repeatedly to be a faithful God. When he said he's going to do something, he's done it. Yes. Every time, repeatedly. When he says he's going to do it, he will do it. You can rest on that. Amen. You can just go to sleep and not worry a thing about what's going to happen because what he says he will do. We live in a time when we have the privilege to see how God has been faithful even in his word. When we look back at the Old Testament we can see that God has shown us what he's going to do repeatedly and then as we read on we see it comes to pass. Consider Abraham in Genesis chapter 17 verses 17 to 21. God told Abraham here that he would have descendants as numerous as the sand on the seashore. Even when he and Sarah were past childbearing age, he reaffirmed this promise to Abraham. And he was faithful to deliver. When it seemed impossible in the natural, impossible to man, God was faithful to his word. That is why Abraham was highly, highly labeled by God, highly acclaimed by God, because what was so impossible with man, God said, I believe God. Uh, Abraham said, I believe God. I have faith in God, and God will produce it. Amen. Consider Psalm 53 and Psalms 22 in, in connection with the Messiah. God promised the Messiah will come and bring salvation and, and gave many prophets about the Messiah's lineage as well. How he would suffer. Details concerning his birth and death. And God fulfilled every one of these things in the life and work of Jesus. Isn't that amazing? And so, consider Israel. When you look at Daniel 25, verse 2 to verse 27 and also in Jeremiah 
God promised that he would disperse Israel and then gather Israel back into a nation. We may say that that already are a nation. God made that promise of the exile and his promise of regathering well before anything happened. In fact, the regathering of Israel has taken place during our time. Isn't that marvelous? Yet, hundreds of years ago, God said he's going to cause them all to come back to their nation. And so, one reason we should have faith in God is that he has proven himself faithful. Whatever he says, he will do. But God is not only faithful, being true to his word, but God has also shown us that he is a loving God. Now this is also important. I mean, it's okay to, to be full of faith. Do we want to put our faith in someone who is honest, but is a tyrant? Probably not. But God is not a tyrant. He has shown himself to us to be a God of love. So we can have faith in him because he's faithful. And we can have faith in him because he is a loving God. That for me is so beautiful, so wonderful. Every one of us knows that we have sinned and we have come short of the glory of God. Yet God has not wiped us off. But he has mercy on us repeatedly. And even as he had mercy, not giving us what we deserve, he's also extended his grace to us, offering us eternal life, which we definitely don't deserve. We don't deserve eternal life. We've done nothing to deserve that, but God gives us that. And so he has shown us his love through the great sacrifice of his son, to love us and to give us life cost his own son is too much for us to understand. And Paul writes in Romans chapter 5 verse 8, he says, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we are still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't say you must shake up. He didn't say you must change. He didn't say you would need to do anything while we were yet sinners. Still sinners, Christ died for us. Not only did the sacrifice demonstrate his love for us, God showed himself to be just. Through that sacrifice, speaking of Jesus, the Lord tells us through Paul in Romans 3, 25 and 26, that God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood he did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished so he did it to demonstrate his justice at this present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus you have faith in Jesus, so you are justified. It's a, it's, it's a good word, this word, justify. Justify means to make right, to make straight. It, it's a term that's used in civil engineering. It's a term used in buildings. Sometimes you get a builder who's slightly put certain wall uh, crooked and it's Somebody else comes along with a little bit more gray matter and he tries to justify that. Make it straight somehow that when you look at it, you don't see it's crooked. So we were all crooked. And he came and made us straight. Justify us. Only he could do that. Only he could do that. 
So even when we fail to see justice happening, we need to remember that God is just. And God's justice will be accomplished either through the blood of His Son or to those who fail to receive Jesus as the Savior in God's perfect timing. So God is faithful. God is loving. God is just. But I would argue even further for us to put our faith in someone, there needs to be at least one more characteristic that we need to find in them. And that is, do they have the ability to do what they say? Do they have the ability, in other words, to deliver? You know, the government says lots of nice things for the people to hear. This is what we're going to do. This is how many jobs we're going to turn out. This is how many homes we're going to build. All very nice things. But what we have discovered is that they don't deliver. They couldn't even deliver books to a school last year, in October or November, that they needed in February. government down too much because right here amongst ourselves we don't deliver on our words we promise to come and we don't come we promise to do something and we don't do it so do we deliver well let me tell you God has shown himself to be powerful in fact he is all powerful that means he has the ability to do whatever he wants. He has demonstrated his power in two ways. We find that in Romans chapter 1. So that we can know of his great power. He demonstrates his power through the resurrection. Romans 1 verse 4, Paul tells us that Jesus, who through the spirit of holiness, was declared with power to be the Son of God by His resurrection from the dead. And we also learn in that same chapter, just a few verses later, that God showed us His power through creation. 120. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made to, so that men are without excuse. And so, God is faith worthy. And He demonstrates His worthiness through His character, which is faithful, loving, just, powerful. And it's truly rational to have faith in, in such a God. It's truly rational to have faith in the God of the Bible, even when we see things that do not make sense to us. This is the God whom we serve. This is our God. And if He is just, He is loving, He is powerful, He is faithful, that means you can trust Him. Amen. I don't know what you're going through tomorrow. I don't know what your situation is, but this is his character. So why do we struggle so much? Why do we truly not live by faith there, as the Lord wants us to do? Well, I'll tell you that in those times when we are struggling to live by faith, and wondering what God is doing, and when there are so many problems that surround us, we need to stop focusing on what we don't know. Stop focusing on the answer. Stop because we don't know what the answer is. And start focusing on what we do know. Did you get that? Stop focusing on what you do not know. What do we know? We have a God that is faithful, that is just, that is loving. That is powerful. That is what I know. He's faithful. That's what I know. Focus on that. Don't focus on your problem. Don't focus on what's 
going to happen. Focus on this God who's promised never to change. That is what we see in Habakkuk does. And I want you to look again at some of the last verses of chapter 1. Even as Habakkuk is still questioning God, he begins to refocus on God, whom he knows is faith-worthy. If you want to take a car on the road, it's got to be road-worthy. Well, the police will pull your car off the road. If you want to get onto the faith road, if you want to go out there tomorrow in the marketplace, in the shopping malls, in your office, in your school, you need to be faith-worthy. If you're not going to be faith-worthy, the devil is going to make mincemeat of you. You've got to have your faith in God. And so, what does Habakkuk say as he still questions and focuses on God? Verse 12. Oh Lord, are you not from everlasting? I like that. He changes his tune a little bit here, doesn't he? Oh Lord, are you not from everlasting? He recognizes that God is eternal. My God, my Holy One, we will not die. Hallelujah. Amen. That was a good place to say amen. amen. Many of you missed it. We will not die. Amen. You want to die, then you keep quiet. <laughs> and what he goes on to say, Oh Lord, you have appointed them to execute judgment. And here he recognizes that God is just and has the power to execute judgment any way he wants. We don't have any authority to tell God how to execute judgment. If he's going to use our enemies to teach us, he'll use our enemies to teach us. If he's going to use our neighbors to teach us a thing or two, he's going to use our neighbors to teach us. So, God executes judgment. And he says, Oh Rock! You have ordained them to punish. He recognizes God's strength and power and sovereignty. In verse 13 he says, Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrong. He recognizes God's purity and holiness. In the midst of his not understanding, he begins to focus on what he does know about God. And that's what I want to leave with you this morning. In the midst of you not understanding your situation, no matter how bad it is, you just can't understand. You've done everything you possibly can. You spent everything you can. You cried, you worried, you prayed, you, you fasted, you did everything. In the midst of all of this, you don't understand. Focus on what you do know. My God. He will never leave me, nor forsake me. And so Habakkuk focuses on what he does know about God. That is, he says, I don't know all the happenings, but this is what I know. I know that you are faithful to your word. That's enough for me. I don't know about you, but that's enough for me. I know that God is faithful to His Word. And that is why I stand here tonight, this, this morning, folks, because I know that God is faithful to His Word. Doesn't matter what anybody will say, doesn't matter who would support you, or who wouldn't support you, or what would people say, all of that is not important. If you know that God is faithful, that will carry you. I know you are loving. You have shown that to me through the great sacrifice of your son. I know you are just because you just don't let sin go unpunished, but you atone for it by the blood of your own son. I know you are able to accomplish your will by your own great hand. I know you are ultimately the most powerful 
mighty God. Faith doesn't all means that we have to understand everything. In fact, faith means that I don't understand anything, but I understand no God. That's what faith is really. I don't know anything. I don't know where my support will come from. I don't know how God is going to provide, but I know my God. So that is why the just shall live by faith. Let's just look at one verse and then we'll close. Habakkuk 3, verse 2. I like this verse. Lord, I love your faith. Isn't that a wonderful verse? Lord, I have heard of your faith. You know when we uh, hear of soccer players and when they are taking the front line, we know of their faith. They always score goals and we think they're going to make it. And then what happens? <laughs> The other team knows so much of their fame that they get them crowded up, they never get a chance. But nobody can do that to our God. So Habakkuk says, Lord, I've heard of your fame, and I stand in awe of your deeds. Oh Lord, renew them in our day, in our time. Make them known in wrath. Remember mercy. And verses uh, 3 through 16, Habakkuk here recounts many of God's work through the history of Israel, testifying to God's faithfulness, to God's love and justice and power. And then in the second half of verse 16, he continues and it's up to the screen. God is faithful. God is faithful. Faithful. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, are you struggling with your faith this morning? And in this life that sometimes seems to make no sense, and you come to church Sunday after Sunday, believing and believing and believing and believing, and now you just stop believing because you've got no more believing left. You believe so much, nothing happens. I want to say to you, focus on what we know. Amen. What do we know? God's faithfulness is impeccable. I tell you, that's the only thing that keeps me standing. That's the only thing that keeps me going. I look back and I say, God, you didn't forsake me in the past. You didn't let me down in the past. You provided for me in the past. You took care of me in the past. You will take care of me in the future. Amen. All I need to do is to put my faith and trust in you. And so today, whatever your needs are, no matter how impossible they might seem to you, tell yourself, I don't understand what's going on. I'm not going to focus on the problems that I'm going through. But I'm going to focus on God. Amen. He will see me. Shall we pray? Anybody feeling led this morning to pray? Will you please hear us in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we want to praise your name today. We thank you, Jehovah God Almighty, for your wonderful and precious words that you have given to us, Lord. Lord, your, your 